This video is over triangle inequalities and its endless properties. So in a triangle, the sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle is always greater than the length of the third side. So if I have a triangle ABC that actually exists, it can only exist if these three inequality statements are true. The length of side A plus the length of side B is greater than the length of side C. The length of side B plus the length of side C is greater than the length of side A. And the length of side A plus the length of side C is greater than the length of side B. Now I know this sounds kind of silly, but Look at these examples. Say that I say I have a triangle with side lengths of 1, 1, and 3. Well, I'm going to label my diagram, and you see if I push those two sides so that they will touch, well, they're not long enough to touch because the inequality 1 plus 1 is greater than 3 is not true. It's false. So those sides would never, ever touch. If I have a triangle with side lengths of 1, 1, and 2, if I push those two sides together until they touched, well, they would only touch when they're laying flat on the side that's a length of 2 because the inequality 1 plus 1 does not, is not greater than 2. So these triangles could actually not exist. But if I had a triangle with side lengths of 3, 4, and 5, if I push 3 and 4 together, they would meet because all three of these inequality statements are true. So the sum of any two sides of a triangle must be greater than the third side. Okay, here's another thing you need to know. In a triangle, the longest side is always opposite the largest interior angle. The longest side is opposite the largest interior angle. So in our diagram here, 70 is our largest interior angle, and it is opposite our longest side. I need you to memorize that. On the flip side, in a triangle, the shortest side is always opposite the smallest interior angle. So in this triangle, we see that 30 is a, our smallest interior angle, and it is indeed opposite the shortest side. I need you to memorize that as well. So do these triangles e exist? And they give me some side lengths. Well, I'm just going to draw a little diagram, and I have 10, 3, and 4. And I'm just going to add up the two smaller sides, 3 plus 4, they are not bigger than 10. So, no, this could not exist. This is not a triangle. Now, I have sides 3, 5, and 7. And when I draw those, I'm going to take my two smaller uh, side lengths and I'm going to add them together. And 3 plus 5 is 8, which is bigger than 7. So, yes, this triangle could exist. In the following triangle ABC with the given angle measures, list the sides in order from least to greatest. So notice they are asking me to list the sides, but they don't give me any side information. They only give me angle information. And heads up, I'm going to give you a problem like this on the unit test. So I'm going to have to remember that the longest side is always opposite the largest angle and the shortest side is always opposite the smallest angle. Now you know me, I'm pretty visual, so I'm going to draw a triangle and label it ABC with my degrees and then I am going to just make myself a little table that says shortest, middle, longest. Oh hush honey, sorry my kitty cat's meowing at me. Okay, so I'm going to identify my sh smallest angle which is 40 degrees. So opposite that 40 degree angle B is side AC. So side AC would have to be my shortest side. Now let's look at my longest side. Um, my biggest angle is 81 degrees, so opposite that is side BC, so that would be my longest side. So the only side that's left is AB, so that would be in the middle. So those are my side lengths listed from shortest to largest or longest. Now, let's 
switch out our degrees on our visual aid here, and I highly recommend that you draw a triangle and label it. Um, I need to follow, find my smallest angle, which in this case is 24 degrees, angle C, and opposite that is side AB, so that's my shortest side. My largest angle is 121 degrees, which is angle B, and opposite that is side AC, and the only side that is left is side BC. So those are my sides listed from shortest to largest, or shortest to longest, sorry. And again, I'm going to give you a question like this on the unit test. Then I'm going to turn around and give you a question like this on the unit test as well. In the following triangle, ABC, with the given side measures, list the angle, angles in order from least to greatest. Now notice they're asking us to list angles, but they haven't given us any angle information. They've only given us side information. So we have to remember that the longest side is always opposite the largest angle, and the shortest side is always opposite the smallest angle. So I'm going to draw my triangle again, and I'm going to label my side lengths. And what I'm going to do is list my smallest to my largest in my angles. So I have to find my shortest side. And my shortest side is AC here. So opposite side AC is angle B, so that must be my smallest angle. Now I want to find my largest side, or longest side, sorry, which is 19. That's opposite my largest angle, which is angle A. And then the only angle that's missing is C, so that must be in the middle. All right. Now let's redo our diagram here and list it with these side lengths, 1, 11, and 5. And I want to identify my smallest angle, so I need my shortest side. My shortest side is AB, and opposite AB is angle C. So my smallest angle is C. Now my largest angle is opposite my longest side. My longest side is BC, and opposite that is A. So my largest angle is A, and that means that B is in the middle. So these are my angles listed from smallest to largest. Again, I'm going to give you a question like this on the unit test. Okay, what is the shortest side of triangle ABC given the following angle measures? Now again, they're asking me to do side lengths and identify the shortest side, but all they've given me is angle measures. So I have to remember that the smallest angle is opposite the shortest side. So what I really have to find here is which one of these angles is smallest. Well, I think I have an idea just by looking at the expressions for each of these. But to find out for sure, I'm going to go ahead and draw my diagram. And then I'm going to remember that by the triangle sum theorem, if I add up angles A, B, and C, it has to equal 180. So I'm going to put all of these expressions in for angle A, B, and C and set them equal to 180. I'm going to combine like terms. And then I'm going to solve this two-step equation. And I'm going to get that x equals 9. But they didn't ask me for x. They asked me for the shortest side. So I'm trying to find the smallest angle. So I'm going to use that 9 and I'm going to stick it into each one of my angles. So when I put it in the expression for a, I get that angle a is 71 degrees. When I put it in for b, x, the x, x, x in expression for angle B, I get that angle B is 62 degrees, and I could find angle C in several ways, but I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to put 9 in for that expression and find that angle B, or C, sorry, is 47 degrees. Now, out of those three angles, C is my smallest angle. So if I look at my diagram, C is opposite side AB. So therefore, AB is the shortest side of this triangle. All right, now the last one, and I want you to put a star by this because you're going to see one like this on your unit test as well. It says, what is the longest side of the triangle shown below? Well, remember longest side has is always opposite my largest angle. 
because they don't give me any side lengths here, but you have to be careful with this because this is only true within one triangle. So if I had a triangle, a right triangle with side C, this little bitty one, and then a great big right triangle with D, just because both of those are 90 degrees does not mean the side opposite them is the same length. So it's only within a triangle that this largest angle is opposite the longest side. So you have to be kind of careful when you have two triangles stuck together like this. And you have to find the longest side of each. So let's look at triangle ABD first. And I know by triangle sum theorem that angle A, which is 30, plus angle B, which is 100, plus angle D, or the measure of angle D, equals 180 degrees. And when I solve that, I get that the measure of angle D, angle D is 50 degrees. So out of this triangle, my largest angle is 100 degrees. So my longest side in this triangle would be side AD. But let's look at our other triangle because it has a degree of 120. And let's see what angle BDC is. Well, I know it's uh, that whole great big angle over there is 90, 50 of that is angle BDA. So when I subtract, I get that BDC is 40 degrees. And I know by the triangle sum theorem that 120 plus 40 plus the measure of angle B up there has to equal 180. And therefore, angle B in that one triangle, that smaller triangle, is 20 degrees. So out of those, 120 is my largest, or my largest angle. And therefore, my longest side for that triangle would be BD. But when I compare that longest side to triangle ABD, I notice that it is actually the shortest side of ABD. It might be the longest side for triangle BCD, but not for triangle ABD. So I must check both. So the longest side on this figure is side AD. You will find some of these in your practice as well. All right, I think you have enough to start working on your practice.